thank you for joining me today with Bobby Badochka. She is an entrepreneur, a business professional, an author, and a venture associate for Tandem Launch. That's Canada's premier tech incubator. And today, Bobby is going to discuss with us how to fuel your business forward. And I'm Linda Fisk. I'm the CEO of Lead Hership Global, and I am absolutely passionate about working with executives and influencers who want to create big impact. Bobby participates as a mentor to startups, taking on board members as well as advisory roles. And Bobby is absolutely a change agent. And she's known as the friendly feminist. And as I noted, she is eternally outspoken, which I absolutely love. Get ready for a powerhouse conversation with the one and only Bobby Badoka. Well, thank you, <laughs> Linda. My gosh, what an introduction. Hard to follow that act, but thank you. Um, and I'm really, really happy to be here. So what I'm going to talk about, I'm going to try to make it quick so that we can um, have more time for a discussion. Um, but I tried to distill down sort of what we do at Tandem Launch um, that could be mapped on to every entrepreneur in every sector. Um, and so let's just um, get going with that. Um, so as uh, Linda had mentioned, these are the three things that I'm most involved in. Uh, my book, uh, Sexual Intelligence in Business, Tandem Launch, and Imagine Ideation. So how are we going to fuel uh, your business and move things forward um, from the lessons learned of Tandem Launch, building uh, several companies? We're actually at the we need to change the public uh, the public announcement. I think we're at 32 companies now. Um, so we're gonna talk about how to get real uh, with yourself and your company. You gotta do your homework, understanding your why, importance of a great pitch, cash is queen, um, and the most underestimated factor in business success and finding your fuel. So let's get real, everyone. Uh, these days, uh, everybody wants to be an entrepreneur. Everybody wants to be a CEO. Um, it's really, really sexy, super trendy. Also happens to be one of the biggest economic drivers um, for Western nations. So there's definitely a lot of impetus uh, 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 from the governments and from supporting institutions and investment community to get more startups out there. But not everybody is actually cut out to be an entrepreneur. And so one should really um, get real and ask yourself the honest questions about that. Because there's a few myths that need to be dispelled. Um, you know, what I hear um, when, uh, when we start looking at entrepreneurs to build companies with is some of the things they say, like, oh, I want to create my own hours and I want to be my own boss and I want to control my decision making. And we kind of giggle and then let them know that, you know, actually, you don't control your hours at all. You basically work nonstop. Um, you want to be your own boss? Yeah, actually, your clients and your investors and your board, you don't just have one boss or two boss. You probably now have 20 or 30 bosses um, and you do not get to control decision making. Um, the market controls your decision. Investors control your decisions. Not to say, you know, everything's out of your control, but it's just this sort of um, um, this sort of glamorous idea of, of what it's like to actually run your own company. Um, that the reality on the ground just isn't isn't like that. It's for the most part, you won't get paid for a while. Uh, you know, it's very long hours. You're going to have to sacrifice um, some relationships out of the deal because you just won't have the time. Um, unicorns, especially, so we hear a lot about these unicorns now. Um, there's not very many of them. Uh, you just hear about them because they're really big, splashy news. But the fact is, is that they're really, really rare. And I, I just know too many companies um, in and out of Tandem Launch that are hoping like, oh, I'm gonna be the unicorn. I'm just gonna get this started. And I'm gonna get bought off real quick. Yeah, this is, I mean, people should just get that idea out of their head right away because if, if, if that's what you're ho hoping for, then you might find yourself um, quickly disappointed. So it's, it's really, there's no silver bullet. It's a hard, hard road. You have to be prepared for that. And the, the more honest you get with yourself about that, um, the better. Um, and this is sort of what we uh, uh, tell our entrepreneurs too when we come into Tandem Launch. And so uh, the next step is you have to do your homework. For some reason, entrepreneurs do not want to do this. They don't want to go do some kind of uh, customer discovery and product to market fit because if they go and find out that actually 
people don't think this idea is that great. And, and, and maybe people don't want to buy it. They're like, Oh no, because most people think, no, I got it. I love this idea. I asked all of my family and friends who of course were extremely supportive. And yeah, that's a great idea. Good for you. You know? Um, but it's, it's, you need to, uh, it's, it's great that you, if you have supportive community around you, but um, you still need to go out and do customer discovery. You literally have to talk to hundreds of people. Uh, what is really required is that you get down and dirty and you start talking to people, hundreds of people, if possible, people you don't know, people who don't care about you. Um, don't be shy to pick up the phone and actually call potential customers because um, they're going to give you the real feedback. Like, hey, I'm thinking about building this. Do you, would you buy it? And if so, how much? And you really have to go through that exercise. It's super critical. It's part of the Tano Monch mandate. People spend at least three to four months all day long, every day, calling up customers, calling up clients, calling up uh, people in the field and getting getting a sense of, of, of where things were, were at. And, you know, in this case, you really do have to be brave um, and bold to go and do that because it is it can be a real... Um, eye opener and it can tell you information you really need to know, especially information about don't, don't do this and do something else. You know, if you're trying to do something and while you're on the phone, if ask them, well, if it's not that, what do you need? And then you can start figuring out and, and, and basically customizing uh, what you need, uh, what the customer needs uh, directly from them. And uh, one last thing, yes, oh my gosh, do not tell investors that you don't have competitors. It's just not true. It's never true. Everybody has a competitor. Even if your product is not, your service is not precisely uh, uh, like everybody else's, you still need to line your up and, and map yourself um, in relation to them. It's really important. If you haven't done that exercise, investors will not take you seriously. Um, and so the result is, I would say one of the biggest ways that you can feel your business is to know your business better than anyone. Um, and so that will require uh, you doing a lot of uh, customer discovery, knowledge, reading books, talking to advisors, because confidence equals um, uh, a good business. And then uh, here we have, uh, so everybody I'm sure has heard of Simon Sinek. He's, he's a proponent and the author of the book, Start With Why. Um, and so the one should go through this exercise because um, it's really important for you to understand why you're doing what you're doing. Um, it's, it's really important that what is your why? Oh, I want financial freedom. I want, um, you know, I want to have impact. I want to solve real world problems. These aren't why. That's not specific enough. You are going to face a lot of problems, a lot of challenges, a lot of no's. Um, it's, it's a hard road. And if you want to make it through all of that stuff, your intrinsic motivation uh, must be very clear to you. Um, and so going through the exercise of, of figuring out what is it that's motivating you, why you really do what you're doing is really critical um, to the process. And um, it's, it's just really like, I, I can't stress that enough. It, you have to be able to connect the dots um, it, with what you're doing. So like, for example, um, you know, what, what I do uh, for Imagine Ideation, we move ideas forward. Um, that's, that's a very generic thing to do. But what I really love is connecting the dots, connecting people, and helping people achieve their goals um, through, uh, you know, helping them to find money. Um, there's a real need in the community for that. And this, and, and it's the community of social enterprise, nonprofit and charity that specifically aligns with my values. I wouldn't want, I wouldn't be as excited to do it if I was doing it for corporations, right? So you have to figure out in a, in a very specific way, what is your why? Um, and that, that's a really important part of the process as well. And so um, one thing that I see nine times out of 10 is people uh, do not make a nice pitch deck and are not able to pitch their business. You should be able to um, pitch your business uh, in a multitude of different ways. So, and to different folks. So you always have a different audience. Um, you, you might be just standing in the grocery line or at your grandma's house or at a friend's house or add a new client, you, you have to be able to 
tell people what you're doing in 10 seconds, 30 seconds, one minute, two minutes, five minutes, 15 minutes, one hour. Like you have to be able to adapt your pitch um, to this range uh, because people that you're, say, networking with at a networking event, I mean, you have them at five, five minutes, 10 minutes, um, and you can't pitch them the whole time, right? This is supposed to be conversational. Um, at the same time, the type of pitch deck that you would give to an investor is not the same that you would give to um, a client. And so understanding who is your audience and um, and who you're targeting is also key. Um, it, it seems like there's people think, oh, I make my one pitch deck and that's good for everybody. Once you get going, you're going to realize you're going to have 20 different pitch decks. Um, and, and every time you pitch, you're going to tweak it. Um, and so what you're originally pitching in the beginning will evolve over, over time. And that's okay. That means you're like, you're listening, you're getting feedback from people and you're incorporating that. Um, so one, uh, one important thing also is the whole purpose of um, a great pitch deck is not to tell them everything about everything. You just want to get the next meeting. You just want to move the conversation along its, its expected cadence. Um, so don't try to squeeze in every single detail in your pitch deck. Um, leave something for questions. Leave something for to be learned later on. Um, and so you're sort of taking people on a journey through storytelling, having a strong narrative um, just to get yourself to the next meeting. Um, I cannot tell you how many times um, I have to fix up people's pitch decks or, I mean, I don't fix them, but I tell them what needs to be fixed um, and get them pitching, practice pitching. You have to practice. Oh my God. And not just in the mirror. You got to walk around the house. You got to tell everybody who, who will listen to you, especially if it doesn't matter. Better to work it out and get it practiced out the mouth like theater. Um, it's, it's life is a stage and you need to perform during your pitch. And so practice is key. Um, next is cash is queen. So I hope everybody gets the, the switch up there because I don't want to use cash is king. Um, so here's one, uh, one thing that a lot of entrepreneurs just assume is that they will be taking venture capital money. Um, now, of course, Tana Launch, this is, this is all we do for the most part. Every now and again, we might kind of get some non-dilutive funding here and there. But generally speaking, um, our companies at the, at the rates that we're looking for, because we raise everything from $2 million to um, $30 million, uh, for the companies. Um, but a lot of startups don't actually need to raise venture capital. Um, of course, you should be starting out bootstrapping friends and family money. Um, but you should generate revenue and that should be your number one focus. Um, people jump too quick to venture capital. They give a ton away uh, of their company. Um, most entrepreneurs, so Tandem Launch is, is a bit unique because we're an incubator and we're a VC hybrid. So we know what a term sheet lo look like and we're there for our companies to support them, to let them know this term sheet is good. This one is not. We've seen thousands of them. Um, most entrepreneurs as a, as a solo or, or, or partners have maybe never seen um, a term sheet in their, in their first raise. They won't know. You won't know if you're getting a good deal or not. Um, and chances are you're not. Um, and so you should be very careful um, when you are um, considering to, to, to raise money from venture capital. Um, there are sometimes better ways of going about it. Bank loans, believe it or not, um, depending on how much you need, the rate will be cheaper. They don't take equity um, and, uh, you know, tax credits. There's a few organizations um, that can help you figure out how much tax credits you can get. Uh, so I, I can't speak for the U.S., but I know in Canada, they are they are really, really um they're really worth taking. Like you're literally leaving millions of dollars on the table. Um, there's also grants. You think, oh, grants are only for charities and nonprofits, not so. Um, there are a few institutions um, in Canada here that give quite large multi-million dollar grants to startups. And so you should be uh, investigating and unturning all of those opportunities before you think about venture capital because venture capital is really hard. It is really hard. So in the world of startups and venture capital, there's literally maybe hundreds of thousands of startups looking for money. And there's hundreds of thousands of venture capital that are looking to deploy cash, especially right now. Right now, because of COVID, they've been sitting on what they call dry powder. 
They've been, they need to deploy cash. They have a time limit. They have to deploy their funds soon. Um, and they're, they're, so they're looking for opportunities. The problem is, is that imagine you're in a room with a million VCs and a million entrepreneurs and trying to find the ones that, that are, are the match. It's very, very difficult. Um, it's, it's not uncommon for me to reach out to 900 to 1500 investors only to get maybe 20 meetings that convert into five due diligence that one ends up um, investing. The conversion rate is very, very low. It's a lot of work. You got to hunt it down. You got to hunt them all down and you're competing with so many people, not who are good, but they, every, every VC wants to look at the deal at least for a second because they want to see if it's good or not. Um, and so they are entertaining pitches all day long from a whole bunch of people, most of which are crap. Um, and so it's, you just, it's, it's one of those things that you have to be a real hustler on this. Otherwise, after 50 no's, you're going to give up. Um, but you've got to know if you do want to do venture capital, there's a way to go about it. Um, and it's, there's a, probably too much details to go in at, uh, at, at a customized basis, but I'm happy to, to speak with anyone afterwards if you want more precise advice um, on these topics um, and for your business particularly. Um, but you have to be prepared to really have a massive spreadsheet and reach out to people all day long for six to eight months. And then your raise generally only will give you maybe 18 months to 24 months runway and you're gonna have to do it again. So that's venture capital. It's, it's the least fun, um, but also rewarding because when you get, like when, when our companies get they sign the turf sheets like I mean tears are flowing because it was it's such a long hard thing and when you finally get it um one thing I should also mention too uh some great advice um uh I've, I've gotten over the years is be careful who you do choose uh, a lot of entrepreneurs because the process is like this and it's so hard they end up just taking whoever says yes um out of desperation and um you know, most of the time that works out okay because most VCs, you know, they they have a very standard, uh, they just want ROI. They're going to help you out a little bit, mentor here, introductions there. It's pretty standard procedure. Um, but every now and again, you'll get some assholes and you will be stuck with them. It's, it's easier to divorce your spouse than it is to get rid of an investor. Um, they are in, <laughs> yes, we do. You're, I, it is really, really, it's nearly impossible to get rid of them. And so you want to be careful to choose ones that you like, that you want to spend time with, that they're nice and that you've gone through the process of, of getting to know them. Um, even though you're like, please give me money. I just need 2 million, sign the check. Um, just, you know, be careful who you get in bed with. And then, uh, here is the most underestimated factor in fueling your business and our number one, I would say, problem uh, that we have here at Tandem Launch is humans. Humans are your money. They are the ones that are going to make or break your business. If you don't have um, a good team, if you don't have a good co-founder, if you don't have a good CEO, if you don't have good investors, and these are all humans, um, you know, good employees, um, you know, choosing the right hiring for culture fit. Um, it can just totally destroy your business. Recruiting is very taxing process, takes a long time. Um, I always recommend people to, you know, you're going to hire at some point, start getting to know people a year in advance, at least, um, so that you don't have to tell them, hey, I might hire you in the year. And so I'm going to get to know you. You just start getting to know them. You want to start getting to know people that you you might think, you know, I might want to work with this person down the line, or I think that they have the skill set that I might need at this point or that point. Start making friends, start getting to know them early. Um, and if you do that, um, when you do come time to hire, you've already got a bunch of people already on your pocket and you don't even have to do a post. Because when you post, you know, on Indeed or whatever the international job sites are, it is, um, you're going to get a lot of um, unsuitable candidates because people just blast. Like we get sometimes applications. I mean, people aren't reading. They just click apply every, every single thing without thought. And it's going to take you time to go through all of that. 
Um, you know, human behavior at the workplace is very, very um, important to figure out how to manage. Not some people are really great, you know, business builders and they're they're really great ideators or inventors, but then when it comes to people, they're like, eh. you know, Tatum Launch, uh, most of our entrepreneurs are PhDs uh, in technical fields um, out of university, maybe a year or two or fresh out. Um, social skills and, you know, uh, finesse in uh, people management, not necessarily their, their, their top skill. It takes, you know, some training and some mentorship to get them um, sort of into the right headspace because uh, I mean anyone who's got employees knows there's always going to be problems um, and you spend a good deal of your time dealing with those problems and so getting ahead of that means choosing the right humans um, that you're going to interact with now of course your clients are humans and you get less choice about those people but if you if you have all of the other human aspects um sorted out then then you should be okay but people just underestimate how how important um and how much time you will spend managing your people and your people problems people think oh i'm just going to be you know spending time doing the technical stuff and doing the business and the finances yeah the hr just eats it will eat up your day like nobody's business. So it's a really, if you have your, if you have happy humans, you will have um, a happy business. And so um, take the time to uh, make sure that you have all of those things uh, in alignment. And again, if anybody wants more details about how to go about that, you can um, hit me up afterwards and I'm happy to, to give you advice about that. And so uh, what also people don't know is that there's you are yourself a human. And uh, I mean, we hear a lot about mental wellness and we hear a lot about all these things um, all day long about, uh, you know, meditating and, and getting good sleep and don't work too hard and all this. And there's a lot of truth to all of those things. Um, it is important to get your mind and your sleep and your body sorted out and you're healthy. Um, all of these will definitely help you. Um, also getting, you know, uh, getting focused, really drilling down on the thing that you want to do, um, and getting, getting your calendar sorted. Uh, you know, it's, it's very, very, when you sort of have, if you have a messy desktop and a messy file system and a messy calendar, then, you know, you probably have a bit of a unorganized head as well. And then that makes it really hard, um, to succeed at business, um, if you don't compartmentalize those types of things. But just super quick, um, what people don't know is that you can also use your sexual energy to um, harness, uh, to build your business. As far as, um, uh, you know, being taking care of your body and taking care of your mind, this is also something that can be a source of energy that gets you jacked up for the day. Um, and that can manifest itself in all sorts of, of ways. And that is also another topic um, that we can talk about. That's a more personal one. Uh, so again, if people want to know more about that, uh, you can take a look at my website um, and, or even better, yeah, I, I wrote a book about it, but if you just want to jam about it um, over Zoom, I'm happy to do that too. And so just to kind of wrap up on the takeaways, um, I made it real plain and simple here to be honest with yourself. Um, are you really cut out for entrepreneurship and all of the things that goes along with that? Knowing your business, knowing your why, creating effective pitch, generate revenue first, people, please. Um, and don't estimate, underestimate the impact of uh, humans on your business and get your energy sorted out. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, move your slide forward, please. Oh, God, I was on the wrong. Yeah, there you go. There we go. Sorry about that. So yeah, so there's, uh, there's no shortcut. There is no hack. It is, um, I mean, there's a lot of things online that tell you different hacks about how to do this overnight and do that overnight and passive income. And I, like Linda said, I, I have a pretty extensive network of people I talk to five new people almost every single day. There's nobody that I've ever talked to that is actually living proof of that. Now, I'm sure there are people that are doing that. I'm just saying it's it's probably uh, not the way to go if you have something more specific in mind. Um, so I'm happy to be wrong about that. Love if, if anybody pointed that out. Um, I, I'm sure it exists. It's just not, I don't think it's all that common. 
Um, but if you want to do it, uh, do it the right way, then do it the hard way. Bobby, that was awesome. And everyone, please take note of Bobby's final slide, which is her contact information.